All right, this is just a quick video to give you guys a visual representation of what our different uh, decision structures looks like. So I did a legend over here because uh, there's a couple different graphs uh, and it's just color coded. So the blue ones uh, is just for if statements, black is for if else, green is for else if, and so on. Um, what you can do is that you can actually click on any of these here, any of the different colored graphs, and it'll take you to the corresponding video for a worked example actually in Xcode. Uh, but for now, this video, we're just looking at just visually representing them because sometimes you'll be asked to do this. So first of all, the if statement. Uh, remember in this video, we just had uh, a school, the status of a school that was open was just always open and maybe if it snowed too much, it would close. So its default is open, so the computer will come in here, or a program, and if there's not enough snow in this decision structure, uh, or this condition, say we needed over a foot of snow or something, then if it's not, sure, it's just gonna stay open. But if we do get over that threshold, it's going to come down here. The condition will be true. And this uh, this will be our simple task that's going to set our school status to closed and then head out and continue on with the program. So that's just uh, that's our if statement with no, with no false branch. Here was our if else statement with a true branch and a false branch. So in our condition, remember, if we had, say, if there's over a foot of snow, it would go this way. And in this situation, actually, if you watch this video, we said that our school didn't have a specific status set. So this decision structure would choose whether it's open, there here, the school would decide whether it's open, or if this uh, condition was false, then the school would uh, set its status to closed. Or maybe I had got that backwards. But this way, um, you can watch the video if you want. Um, this is just basically very similar, but it does uh, set something for true, and it also sets something for false. Here in our green one, this is our else if um, visualization for the flowchart. And uh, so remember in this video, we were talking about GPAs maybe. So it's going to come down here and the first condition will say maybe, is your GPA over 90%? If it's true, this one will set it to an A and then you're out and then you're done. Then your GPA is A. And then if it's not over 80 or if it's not over 90, it would come down here and is, well, is it over 80? Sure. If it's true, it'll set it to a B and it'll come down here and you're out. So now your GPA is set to B. And again, if it wasn't over 80, maybe it'll come down to 70, come over here, set it to a C, and so on and so forth. You can make this as big as you want. Um, the next one, the nested if-else. Uh, if you click on this video, we were looking at um, maybe someone trying to join a sports team. So, for example, this first, uh, this first condition would ask maybe, are you male or female? Say you're male, or say, are you male? And say if that's true, you're going to go over here, and then it would ask maybe, are you over 18? And if you're true, then you're going to be on the men's adult team. And if it was false, then you'll be on like the men, the boys team. Uh, then if you came down here, this is actually, this should say false. But um, if you come down false, you are not a man, you are a woman. And then if you're over 18, sure, you'll be on the ladies team. And if not, you'll be on the girls team. So this is just a way, you know, just a uh, picture actually what's going on with your program and the flow of the program you're making. Uh, the next two over here, this is Boolean and and Boolean or. And so remember we had, <coughs> say, is uh, this one, this video, if you watch it, uh, we were looking at the temperature of water to see what phase it was. Um, here, so if we come in, remember it was, is the temperature of the water over zero degrees? Um, and then this one was, is it under 100 degrees Celsius? So if you come in here, uh, if your water is definitely over zero degrees, that's true. And it's going to come down to the next condition because both of these have to be true. Uh, and then if it was less than 100, both of these are true, so your end result is true, and your water would definitely be, uh, definitely be, a liquid. Because if it's, my, remember the other example was if it's minus ten, sure, uh, the first one is false, uh, and that actually just kicks you right out. Or if it was maybe a hundred and one degrees, it would come down and say, yeah, I'm over zero, but I'm not, I'm not under a hundred, so I would actually be in a gas phase. So that way, the water it would be impossible for the water to actually be a liquid. <laughs> Uh, so remember, definitely in a, in a Boolean AND, both conditions have to be true for the whole thing to be true. Whereas in a Boolean OR condition, um, only one of them has to be true. Uh, I actually, this should say true here. I'm not sure what color I'm in. But it would say true and true. And so if either of these conditions is true, then we'll pass the whole condition off as being true. So remember, we had the false when we accidentally put in the wrong one. Um, if you guys you guys can just watch the video and see that but so this is applications too uh not necessarily in determining the phase of water it's not very good but if you just want to test maybe you're picking lucky numbers or something and you say if you can pick two of one of two of the numbers i was thinking of i'm thinking of one and two and maybe someone puts in a, a two it'll come down here and say well that's the number is not one 
but when they come over here, if the, you know this condition was is the number two, then sure that's true, and it would come down and yeah, you picked one of the lucky numbers. <clears throat> so there we go. That's just the the flowchart visualizations, and here I also just wrote um, some of the the conventions for writing flowcharts. A square is generally a simple task. Uh, I like to think of it as just do something. The, the diamond shape here is always our condition and it usually has a true and a false, but also it doesn't necessarily have to have um, thing like other branches afterwards, but it does have to have a true and false, like two ways to exit that condition. And we didn't use any of these uh, par parallelogram shapes here, but uh, sometimes if you are drawing a flowchart and you want to signify that uh, the user is inputting or outputting, or the program is inputting or outputting, uh, you would use this where it's different than a simple task. The simple task is doing something like changing a variable. This is like C in or C out. So there you go. Awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, don't forget, if you want, you can just click on any of these and just watch the corresponding video.